How's it going, God's beloved children? Um, if we could just start by praying in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you're the, the living breath of God that came down from heaven. The living man. And uh, Jesus, you are the word. You are the only word of God. There is no word more than that. It's just Jesus. Jesus, you are the source and essence of life. And you are the only thing that we need. Forever and ever. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Amen. You are that living bread, God. Jesus, you are the living bread that came from God, that came from heaven. You are the living water. You are the source of life. You are the root of life. And we need nothing more. Let us not focus on the fruit, but rather the root that bears the fruit. For without the root, there can be no fruit. We thank you, Father. Amen. Um, I'd like to touch on a, 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 a topic quickly about where Jesus speaks about John, the, the disciple who Jesus loved most. And this is very interesting because many of us were trying to figure out but what makes him so special. <laughs> and this is about to bless you. In ways that you cannot fathom. Because it is said that amateur Christians are still trying to be number one with God. But mature Christians are resting in, in, in what God has really done for them. And only resting. And um, we can see this by Peter. Peter desperately wanted to be number one and he tried to please Jesus the most but Peter of all the disciples was the one to deny him three times Peter was the one that Jesus turned around and rebuked Peter was the one who was crucified he, he, he asked to be crucified upside down because he felt that he wasn't worthy to be crucified as Jesus Christ and all these things show that how much he tried to please Jesus. Okay. Jesus is not pleased with anybody that's trying to please him. He is pleased with everybody, even just the child, that knows he's already well pleased. Jesus doesn't want sacrifice. He wants mercy. Jesus didn't come to die so that you can work and serve him till the, the sweat of your brow drops. He came that you may rest in him. If you want to please Jesus, rest in what he labored for you freely. This is what glorifies the kingdom of God and the Father. Rest. And you know what? When Jesus, when, when John was, was next to Jesus at the table, he was resting on Jesus' chest. He was resting on just Jesus as enough. He didn't depend on his works. He didn't depend on on this or that or anything, you rest on Jesus as the source of life. The same with Martha and Mary. Martha is trying to fulfill the law of being good and pleasing God. And Mary has chosen the only part, the best part, and the only part, if not the only part that is needed, of knowing that Jesus is already well, perfectly pleased, and it will not be taken from her. Do you understand what I'm saying? You understand? God doesn't want slaves or servants. He wants children. This is very important. Okay, if we want to please Jesus, we will rest on his chest. Okay, he doesn't like to see us work for what he's already accomplished freely for us. If we want to please him, we must, you know, rest on his chest as, as children in what he already accomplished freely for us. This is what glorifies His cross. This is what says thank you. This is the only way that, that, that we can give thanks is by resting joyfully in what He has already freely accomplished and provided for us. I hope this blesses you. I don't see how I cannot. In Jesus' name. The Spirit of God that is in you. In the name of the breath of God that is in us. Amen.